Greetings, dear students. It's always a great pleasure to welcome you all to the digital session. The topic we are learning today is a poem titled Mother by Jyoti Lanjawa. It's a prescribed topic for 6th Sem Optional English, Paper 7, Indian Literature, Bangalore University. By the way, as you all know, I am Professor Grace Joshua, Assistant Professor, Teachers Academy Degree College, Bangalore. Let me introduce you to Dr. Jyoti's early life and impetus on education. Jyoti Lajava a Marathi Dalit writer and activist has a silent presence in the literary historical landscape. She is known in many Dalit literary circles for her evocative writing. She was born on 25th November 1950 to a middle class Dalit family in Nagpur. Since her childhood, she was encouraged by her family to role model the Ambedkar principle of education as means to agitation. She followed in the steps of Ambedkar and went on to receiving a PhD in Marathi. She even served as the college head of the department of Marathi until her retirement. Her literary works include Disha, No Storm Still Rise, published in 1992, and also Red Slogans on the Green Grass. She has been honored with many awards like a Padma Shri, Lokamitra Award, and Dalit Mitra Award. Dear students, we are aware that poetry can be written with all the same purposes as any other kind of literature. Beauty, humor, storytelling, political messages, etc. Professor Jyoti, the poetess, uses poetry as a means to protest. Jyoti Lanjava's poetic vision is shaped by her acute understanding of the interplay of caste and gender in the formation of Dalit identity. She uses her poetic license to carefully weave a her story highlighting the invaluable role of women in the Dalit movement. In her poem Mother, she alludes to the Namantar Andolan and her mother's unserving devotion to the cause. The word Ma, Amma, I in Indian dialects, Mother, Mommy in English, Ha Ha in Japanese and so on, whichever is the language evokes powerful emotions in everyone. The qualities of a mother as we all know are being patient, strong, humble, empathetic, respectful, authoritative, and supportive. And the list is unending. What a sweet confidence in the name. I'm sure Jyoti too has the same experience, greatly influenced by her mother, in many ways led her to write a poem. The poem Mother presents a daughter's perception of her mother and her deep admiration of her self-respect, her hard work and commitment to the Dalit cause. The woman of the mother is portrayed in all its starkness with the use of realistic details and vivid descriptions. The mother's life of struggle, hunger, poverty, 
hard physical labor, sexual exploitation, humiliation is delicately balanced with compassion and sacrifice. Let's get to the poem. This poem was first written in Marathi but later translated to English. The poetess begins her poem with the description of a precious mother allegorically depicting in the larger picture. Unlike the elite group of women who are so comfortable in expensive attire, she has never seen her mother wearing any expensive stuff like a gold necklace, gold bangles and gold bordered saris and fancy sandals. On contrary, the common sight of her mother is burning soles of her feet in the harsh summer sun, which was a regular plight. It was so unfortunate that the little ones are too at her workplace in the hot summer, hanging in a cradle on an acacia tree. She is busy carrying barrels of tar, working on a road construction crew. This is undoubtedly a picture of hard work and commitment towards her family, hardly concerned about her own self. Dear students, we are aware of the multiple vocations women is involved in the unorganized sector. Therefore, Dr. Jyoti draws our attention to the kind of job she is involved as the work she does is not permanent. Today, she is seen carrying baskets of mud on her head with the pathetic condition of her feet rag-bound instead of sandals. The poverty-stricken life is no new to her. The common sight is she taking her child along with her as there is no other person to take care of the child at home. The child, too, doesn't have proper clothing, comes around to be kissed by her mother despite her busy work. This draws her attention to the conditions of a daily wage worker, especially the woman. It's a matter of question and concern how these women daily wage workers are humiliated and overburdened in any sector. Moving on to the third stanza, it's further a deepening mother's life of struggle, hunger and poverty. She works so hard, ignoring her stomach's growl. All her commitment and love is to feed her children, turning back the tide of tears. What deep love of the mother is being portrayed here. You know, students, subtly, the project before her is building a dam to quench the thirst of hundreds of people, but she is suffering parched throat and lips. The allegorical loving mother's heart impresses her and the memories are still afresh in her mind. Let me bring to you the next stanza. The poetess describes the helpless mother's necessity of shelter in addition to being devoid of basic amenities of food and clothes. All she lives is in a thatched roof hut, dreaming big to have four mud walls to protect her family from the weather conditions. Adding to the woes, she is pregnant again, still feeding a child, staying hungry, with meager earnings, yet another life to feed. The irony in the poem is that she doesn't have a proper house, but she is employed on a construction site, stepping carefully on the scaffolding of a skyscraper, pregnant, carrying a horde of wet cement on her head. Let me bring to you the next stanza. Studies reveal that women 
multitask at home and outside, but the least paid. This stanza is a portrayal of the same. After a hard working day, she is on the way home buying things to cook dinner. Despite her hardships, the kind heart of the mother doesn't forget the little joy she can share with the child. She gives a five paise coin on the little hand saying, go eat candy. And she loves to see the joy and happiness on that little face. She doesn't stop there. She carries the other child to her bosom and encourages to become literate and become an Ambedkar. This stanza is a portrayal of her childhood. How similarly she was encouraged by her family to emulate the Ambedkarite principle. The mother in the poem draws greatest motivation and role from Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who was an Indian jurist, economist, politician, and social reformer who inspired the Dalit Buddhist movement and campaign against social discrimination towards the untouchables, the Dalits. This stanza describes the mother continuing her work in front of the star, burning her very bones to cook and feed everybody. Unfortunately, she is with a growling stomach since afternoon, but thinks twice, half feeds herself, so that she can save a bit for the next morning to stop her children from hunger. Dear students, I do hope that we are clear so far from the above stanzas. Let's move on to the next stanza. She has seen her mother doing all sorts of work to keep life going on, able to feed her children. She is a housemaid washing clothes, cleaning pots in different households, but rejecting the scraps of food offered to her with pride. It is so evident that poverty doesn't stop her from displaying self-respect. The poem also describes the pathetic condition of the mother wearing a ragged sari that had been mended many times. The values are deep-rooted in her who takes unethical men to task, saying, don't you have a mother or a sister? To anyone who looked at her with lustful eyes. The poem illustrates the exploitation of Dalit women on double counts of caste and gender. Let's move on, students. Here is another important stanza penned by the poetess to describe sexual exploitation and humiliation, which seems to be a part of her life. She sometimes encounters with men trying to take advantage of her on a crowded street with a market basket on her head. Despite trying to always keep her head covered with the end of her sari, she's been targeted. The only alternative is to chase anyone who nudged her deliberately with her sandal as a weapon to defend and keep up her purity. All I want to say is never underestimate a woman of dignity. Moving further, students, it's so unfortunate to tell that work has become a byword for her with no support from the spouse. Where is the man, the man who is supposed to help her, assist her, protect her, is nowhere to see in around. As the hen protects her chicken under her wings from the prey, she is the lone protector of her children from all wilds of evil life. She's been working tirelessly until sunset, reaching home, piercing the darkness, only to find the husband who staggered in from the hooch hut, forcing from the door. What a pity, but she still patiently putting up with him. 
Dear students, I understand that each stanza moves deeper into the theme and respect towards father. This stanza seems to be the crux of the whole poem where Dr. Jyoti women defies any categorization forged out of the patriarchal gaze. She dismantles the private public duality and redeems the invisible labors of her women both in the anti-caste movement and in the confines of her home. She illustrates the exploitation of Dalit women on double counts of caste, gender and constructs a new Dalit feminist identity. She is even ready to be beaten up by the police and go to jail with head held high. As we move further, I would like to bring to your notice a common proverb which says, What a man soweth, so shall he reap, which becomes alive in her life with her son in the footsteps of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar as a mother who had not only dreamt but worked so hard, though her past was turbulent. She is proud of her son falling martyr to police bullets as his death means a lot to her. Further, she feels fortunate to martyr if she had two or more sons. The poem truly emulates the Ambedkarite principle of education as a means to agitation. Jyoti, as a result, grew up developing a deep consciousness of caste, politics and praxis. Dear students, in this stanza, the poem describes the mother at her deathbed. The mother, even at her deathbed, is ready to gift her earnings to Diksha Bhumi, which is now a sacred monument of Navyana Buddhism located in Nagpur, Maharashtra. Her very last breath says Jai Beam, the inspiration of her whole life that is none but Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. As we draw to the conclusion of the poem, Dr. Jyoti exposes the very patriarchal aspects of social impairments, the underpinnings of private public duality that kept the Dalit women on the sidelines of the anti-caste movement. She actively advocates for a Dalit feminist identity that puts Dalit women at the center of the movement and hit out at a razor of her story. Dear students, the repetition in the poem is a clear portrayal of the mother's humbleness despite all her trials of life, yet victorious at the end to be the change maker of her era. However, it is just as important to note Dr. Jyoti's unconventional treatment of womanhood. She leaves in her wake a rich literature of resistance, speaking for a generation of women who continue to face triple marginalization through caste system, patriarchy and capitalism. Dear students, I do hope that you got a fair understanding to the poem Mother by Dr. Jyoti and love the poem with its intricacies of turbulent life of a mother, yet brave and victorious. I do want to reiterate that this is definitely not an exhaustive explanation into the topic. Kindly put in your thoughts to make it exhaustive. Thank you for listening. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel for more topics. Meet you with the next topic. God bless.